morning friends i wish happy new year to you all let us have a good beginning and new academic session today we are going to see in our share capital chapter the method for issue of shares by company how the company can issue shares as we know that share may be of 1 rupee face value 10 rupee face value or 100 rupee face value we consider that 10 rupee may be the approximate proper face value normally all company used to issue the shares now the shares can be issued one at a par what you mean by par the face value and the price that is offered by the company both are the same 10 rupee certificate value company is giving and 10 rupee only company is asking at par so neither a profit nor a loss to the company company deal the transaction with the same genuine figure the second position is at premium premium means company is having a sound position company is having a history good history regarding the performance of the company so company is capable of asking more than its face value so let us take an illustration that 10 rupee may be the face value and 5 rupee premium 50% premium company is asking so company ask 15 rupee against that 15 the document of the share value given by the company is only rupee 10 so this 5 rupee 5 rupee is considered as a premium for the company company is getting 5 rupee more it's an extra income for the company so which type of income is this we have learned there are two type of income revenue income capital income from the sale of the goods regular income what you earn to be called as a revenue income so this is not a regular income this is not a income by way of selling of a goods so what you are getting is a premium that is a capital income capital income that to be shown separately with a separate head so here the capital income in our share transaction we will be recording as a security premium on the liability side of balance sheet this is called a security premium account under the head of reserves and surplus we are going to show this particular security premium as a capital income on the liability side of balance sheet so these are the small small things you have to remember for your mcq now this particular income what you have a separate income not to be utilized for the issue of dividend because this is not your revenue income dividend means a part of profit to be given to the shareholder this is not your part of profit this is not your regular hard earned income by way of sale so cannot be utilized for dividend then you may have a question that at what places then this income can be utilized this income can be utilized to write off you may have that loss of discount discount on issue of shares you may have a loss that discount on redemption of the preference shares or redemption of the debentures you may want to give a bonus shares something special extra to your uh, shareholder then the bonus share for that you can utilize this particular income you may do that buyback of the shares so for that also you can utilize this so the at premium what is the premium what are the uh, advantages of the premium income and which place the premium can be utilized you can refer on the textbook page number 20 and you get more about the security premium we are going to continue with this topic and we will be writing the example journal entries related how to record the security premium when company earn the next is that is at discount at discount means company is asking less than the face value if the face value is 10 rupee 3 rupee company give discount and at 7 rupee company issue the shares so this is going to be a capital loss for the company company lose money here 
Your bank amount will be only 7 rupees. Face value is 10 and discount 3. Now, as per the new amendment of the Companies Act, as per Section 53 of the Companies Act 2013, though it is not permitted that to issue the shares at discount. Earlier the company used to issue, but now as per the new Companies Act, this particular whole concept is only cancelled. Only the sweat equity shares which are given to the employees. You remember we have learned the types of equity share. In that one is the sweat equity share. For the dedicated dedication of the employees, whatever shares are given by the company as a token of gratitude, those shares can be issued at discount. It may be given to the directors under section 54 of uh, companies Act 2013. It means that very restricted use of discount is now allowed. So in this chapter, we are going to do the example of uh, at par and at premium. Now no more questions are there regarding at discount. Now when the company issue the shares, company will call the money in a various segments, in a various uh, small small factors. So here, when you are calling the money, those two possibilities are there. One is that calling areas and the second is that few investors may be giving money in advance. It becomes calling advance. Today we are going to focus on the first concept that is call in areas. So what you mean by calling areas? For your one mark question, this may be there in a B section. What do you mean by calling areas? So calling areas means when the company makes a call for the allotment money or a call money, some shareholder fails to pay such money on due date. Whenever you are calling, few particular shareholder may not be able to pay your call. Then such unpaid Remember, such unpaid amount is transferred to the calling areas account. You generate a special temporary account. That what is known as a calling areas account. So when you are asking for money and if your shareholder to whom the shares are allotted, if that party fails to make the payment, it becomes your calling areas. So this call-in areas can be recorded by two methods. There are two methods of recording call-in areas. The first method, you may open the call-in areas account. It is not necessary to open. Without opening call-in areas also, you can record the transaction. So first is open the call-in areas and second is without opening call-in areas account. Here, we keep our original account only open till we get our actual payment. So, let us try to understand that when you open the call-in areas account, which two things you have to do? The first, that first we are opening a call-in areas account. It means that your bank money going to be less. So, temporarily you open that call-in areas account it is one kind of uh, less money you have received. So you open it by giving a debit effect to the call-in areas account. So we open it. And second, when company receive money, that whatever debit call-in areas you have generated, in the second journal entry, when you get your money, you will be writing the journal entry, that bank account debit to call-in areas account credit. So with the first entry and with the second entry, in first, we are debiting call-in areas. Second entry, we are crediting call-in areas. So, automatically call-in areas account is nullified. So, the clear journal entry remains that bank account debit to whatever share capital towards that we have asked money, we are getting. So, this is the temporary use of call-in areas and we open the account. With that also, you can do your example. The second that without opening call-in areas. What we do? We keep our uh, allotment account or a first call account. 
or a final call account it means whichever call you have not received we are keeping that call account only open it means our journal entry will be bank account debit to call account credit with that less amount so your call account remain open so originally when you actually receive your money again you will be writing the same journal entry bank account debit with that less figure what you have not received only with that figure to the respective call account credit so in this manner without opening call in arrears account when you do the journal entry we will be writing the first that we keep the allotment or a call money account open we don't close the full figure whatever you have not received with that your account remain open and the second when you receive company receive the money of such amount that time only your call account will get closed so in this manner what today we have observed that the method of the shares three method at par we will be doing example at premium we have to do the example at discount now we don't have that concept for recording in our books next is call in arrears and call in advance call in advance means that when some few very few shareholders make the payment of all the remaining share call also in advance it become an income for you your bank account entry will be more with that advance money so we record it as a bank account debit to call in advance account for only the portion of money which we have received ahead of time at respective call time the advance account will be debited and call account going to be credited as usual so in this manner opposite to call in arrears is your call in advance so these are the two concepts related to shares journal entry the theory need to be understood so today we have done now next time onwards we begin with a example thank you